So I don't know how long back I start to have uh, problems with depression and anxiety, but I wasn't a particularly happy child. Uh, I came from a, a very isolating family. Even as a family, we sort of isolated uh, with us. Uh, my mum and dad uh, really, I wouldn't say they didn't get on, but they never really showed any sort of love toward each other. Uh, so I felt relatively uncomfortable, uh, even as a child. Uh, my mother used to suffer with headaches uh, and bad sleeping, as did I. As, uh, and she used to take codeine a lot in the days that you could buy codeine in shops. And she would just basically pill pop all of the time. And I think as, you know, as my life progressed, I realised that that was uh, her coping mechanism. It wasn't really for the headaches or anything necessarily. You know, I think a lot of it was just a, a coping mechanism. Uh, and unfortunately, that was exactly the way my life turned out as I uh, went uh, to college didn't complete there, found myself too distracted uh, with other things, really to, to put myself in that situation uh, of complaining. Then I ended up going back home after I'd been away for about four or five years uh, and was living properly on my own for the, the first time. I just found myself becoming and in effect allowing myself to become more and more isolated uh, and so my anxiety increased really you know to the point where I wasn't eating I wasn't sleeping uh, I was avoiding doing anything and I started uh, taking solvening uh, and fell into exactly the same pattern as my mother did in taking it all of the time rather than you know taking it when I had a headache it was literally a, a coping mechanism uh, a couple of years passed and my life didn't seem to go anywhere uh, I felt quite unmotivated and uh, I ended up in psychiatric units for probably about five or six times throughout my life. Uh, it would always be a pattern. I would notice that things wouldn't be going right in my life. My anxiety would, and depression would go up. Uh, I was totally unable to, to deal with any sorts of problems. I've just never really developed any any way of dealing with them, to be honest. I've been on my own for so long that it was anathema to me, you know. I, to me it was, you know, this is just the way it is. I didn't realise that people could learn how to cope with uh, things like that. Uh, negative mindset was a, a huge thing for me. I think, again, some of that is based on my childhood. So after the first time I was in the psychiatric unit, that's when I realised I had a, a psychological dependence to solve the uh, They winged me off that. But my life would go around in cycles, so the next time the anxiety and depression got too much and you know, couldn't cope with things, uh, felt betrayed by people, a lot of it just due to the negative mindset that I had, is uh, then I started abusing prescription uh, medications, just uh, tripling or quadrupling on, you know, what I've been given. Uh, 
borrowing stuff off friends and we're in the same position or buying them if I couldn't get them that way. Uh, that really went on for, quite frankly, you know, most of my life. Uh, it wasn't a regular thing, it would be when the anxiety and depression just seemed to get out of control for me and I wouldn't know how to cope. So that would be, you know, my way of winding down from uh, the constant uh, anxiety, uh, fight or flight, which uh, you know, was, it was a, has been a big thing in my life. Uh, then towards the end, really, sort of uh, up to about probably six, seven years ago, is uh, I quit my job. Uh, everything just seemed to be getting me down and nothing seemed to be going right for me. Uh, was always blaming either myself or, or other people. There was never any sort of black and white, uh, any grey area. For me, it was all black and white. Uh, and I got, at that point, when I was uh, working, I was getting so stressed, particularly at work, uh, that when I get home, I start drinking just to calm myself down. Uh, and of course, with a, a person like myself, it's, it's never enough. So it just escalated and escalated. The job, you know, sort of suffered. I, I didn't like the job. So in the end, I just quit, which is what I've been very good at, quitting things in my life. Uh, when they go against stuff, I quit. Uh, so, that, particularly when I became uh, unemployed, the dream became a, a real issue quite quickly because I had no reason in my head not to drink. You know, I could at least go to work sober. Uh, but at this point it was, oh well, whenever anything made me anxious and nearly everything did, I would have a drink to calm myself down. Uh, and of course, that exacerbates the depression. And so it was a, a cycle where I just ended up just uh, not wanting to, to live anymore. So I went through about a year, uh, no, probably longer, about two years, where I was in and out of hospital from injuring myself a lot. Uh, quite often I would get detox in hospital. Uh, it wasn't my choice per se, it was just that people realised the you know the problem I had and so uh, tried detoxing me and of course I'd go back home and whenever you know things quite quickly went back to the way they were, uh, which is something I was letting it letting happen, is I would just go back to the drink again. Uh, I became very suicidal, tried suicide a couple of times, but uh, sort of packed in halfway through and I realised how uncomfortable uh, it is. I'm laughing because it's a, it's a very bleak thing to say and that's just one of my coping mechanisms. It's not funny. But uh, I was put in a care home for about four or five months for my own safety because I, I was just completely unsafe on my own. And during that time, they uh, said, if you can get through a certain period of time, you can go to a rehab of your, your own choice. As it happens where I'm from, Hartlepool, uh, there were the alcohol service around there, there were, there was a person I knew from about 15 years ago uh, when I was working and it was, uh, she was a young girl at the time who was uh, volunteering for an office you know, right near the office I worked in and uh, 
she'd been an absolute mess. Yeah, just drinking, drugs, bad relationships, you know, mixing with criminals all the time in there. And uh, it was just a revelation to sort of see this person who, in my sort of blackest moment, thought that girl's not going to reach 25, you know, the way that she's going. And uh, she seemed so level headed and confident. Uh, you know, when I saw her, that I said to her, you know, what's, what's happened? And she said, oh, I went to this place called Littledale Hall in Lancaster. Uh, she said, there's a few people here who have been there. And uh, so I, I went around and I talked to the, the people who I found out had been to this place. And uh, I said to my uh, key worker and social worker, I'd like to go to Littledale uh, if that's possible. Uh, this told me it was going to be really hard because it's one, meant to be one of the hardest rehabs in the country. But I knew I had to go because if I didn't push myself beyond what I've always thought I've been capable of, then nothing would change. You know, I'd, I'd just go back to the same things. So I went to a uh, little deal, completed there. Uh, decided while I was there to relocate uh, completely. So asked around for where the best place is in, you know, anywhere. And it, as it happens, Accrington came up time and time again. There's a really good uh, recovery area. So I got in contact with a, a support housing place uh, called St. James got accepted there, uh, I'm here now. While I was putting my plans into place, uh, I went to quite a few different charity organisations to see what sort of uh, things I could offer them and they could offer me. Uh, Red Rose was a place that one of the quite frankly few places that genuinely seemed interested and you know genuinely uh, seemed to want the best for their volunteers. I've worked in a charity organisation uh, for about 12 years uh, prior to my uh, alcohol addiction and uh, I found the same sort of things there that I've been faced with, and not just myself, but quite a few people, uh, and almost a reluctance to, to engage with people, particularly people who have done rehab. Uh, there seems to be a, a mentality that, oh, well, once you've done rehab, that's it, you're fine. You don't need any support now. Uh, and, that's just not the case at all for, I would say, everybody who's been a rehab. You need focus, you need motivation, you need a reason to get up in the morning, you know. You need to try and keep your confidence at a level uh, that will enable, enable you to think clearly and not fall into the, the traps that a lot of us in addiction do fall into. Uh, so I've been in Accrington for just over two months now. I've been uh, volunteering at Red Rose, uh, just offering to do anything really that's going on in the admin field, which is what I've done for most of my life. Uh, and I come here whenever it's open. Uh, and it's a, a really good outlet for me on so many different levels because it stops me isolating, which is a thing that I still, because it's a, a habit I've had through my life, I still feel like doing, but I know that that's 
the worst thing I could possibly do. So it's uh, really handy coming here to uh, get out, you know, meet new people, talk with people I've never met, which again is way out of my comfort zone, uh, and just keep the level of confidence and a clear mindset that I developed while I was in uh, rehab is they gave me all the tools you know that are available to, to deal with all of the obstacles out there in life whether it's psychological you know actual events dealing with uh, you know adversity uh, so that's what I'm doing at the moment I'm just sort of getting on with life I'm taking it at the, the speed that I feel comfortable with not overdoing and not underdoing which again is another thing that I learned really is a, a rehab that I was a very much all or nothing person it was an all or nothing to the absolute nth degree uh, I went from being so busy that it would absolutely exhaust me uh, or I would be so lazy that I would be doing, I would literally be laying in bed all day, particularly when I was drinking, just laying in bed, drinking, trying to pass the time because I felt so unmotivated. So at the moment, I'm uh, still looking around. I've got things happening in my life which are positive. Uh, and again, it's, it's all about, for me, maintaining what I learned at rehab, not allowing myself to slide back into the sorts of behaviours which uh, have led me, you know, led me to rehab in the first place. So, places like, I think, Red Rose particularly uh, are going to be a huge part in my ongoing recovery. Uh, so that's really my life. So. Uh, my plans uh, for going forward is I'm only three months out of rehab at the moment and uh, I'm taking the advice that I was given at rehab, uh, which to me seems to be very much the right advice because sadly the people who haven't followed similar advice uh, have been struggling whereas I, I feel at the moment quite comfortable uh, in my own skin so I'm taking things slowly I'm just doing things at the level that I feel comfortable doing uh, as far as plans I've got plans in terms of looking for employment but I don't know whether I want to be employed in what I did but then again a lot of that was down to the problems I had in, in work particularly the last job I had uh, where I was working for 12 years at a, a charity uh, organisation in Harleyburg this, that was really down to the, the people that I worked with and the fact that I couldn't deal with them, couldn't, you know, uh, talk to them properly and escalate into arguments very, very quickly. I would, you know, feel very defensive. So I still feel like I've, I've got to work on that side of my behaviour, of, uh, of dealing with things properly, uh, becoming more, remaining more assertive than aggressive, which is, has been a, a problem uh, in the past. So I think the volume work for me is, that's certainly my short term goal is uh, just making sure that I'm out and about, meeting people, keeping busy, not isolating, not allowing all of those negative behaviours to creep back, which
which would be very easy to do if I isolated myself. Uh, so I'm happy at the moment doing, I'm doing a little bit of work for a different charity organisation that's helped me keep busy. Uh, I think particularly places like Red Rose where I know that I can come in and that I'm welcome, there's no, no obstacles have been put in my way, uh, whereas in some other places I felt there were obstacles. Uh, I think that's going to be, that's certainly my short term goal, is to see how things go there, wait, if I start to feel like I'm comfortable enough to, to go for a job then you know, I will put those things in plans. I've got nothing set in stone, nothing rock solid. I'm still in the process of just feeling out the area myself, the opportunities. Uh, I was hoping to go back into college, unfortunately that hasn't worked out because of the support housing situation I'm in. Uh, but I think uh, plans really is just to keep my life as balanced as possible, just not go hell for leather uh, like I've in the past. Uh, as I've seen before, as I was very much a person who would do far, far too much or far, far too little. And I realise now that it's all about balance for me. Is, uh, so I'm taking things, I don't know if slowly is the right word, I'm taking things at my pace, at a pace that I know isn't negative in either direction, uh, and just see where that takes me. As, as far as job opportunities, you know, if, if every place was like Red Rose was, then I think I would be perfectly happy to, to work in an environment like that. And it's just a matter of finding a place like that. Uh, and then all of those sort of fears of uh, the problems I've had in when I've been working in the past wouldn't be an issue. 